Little 12-year-old Asif, on his way to work on the back of his brother's bicycle, helps make some of the world's surgical instruments. He is at the bottom end of a supply chain worth $30 billion a year, producing instruments for hospitals, doctor's rooms and beauty parlors across the globe. His workshop may sell a surgical scissor for about $27, which then can be sold through a string of middlemen on the international market for up to $143. But little of that profit trickles back to Sialkot, Pakistan, where Asif has been working since the age of seven. I'm doing it because I have to pay off some debts. I found it dangerous when I first started, but now I've learned the job. To help repay a debt incurred by his father, Asif works on 600 pieces a day, filing and grinding, and exposing himself to hazards not even an adult would tolerate. One of the more long-term health risks is the constant exposure to fine metal dust, which damages the eyes and causes breathing problems, not to mention cuts and burns from various machines. But the greatest danger is intangible. The moment a child, you know, gets in the workplace, he just jumps from his childhood to an adult. He simply becomes an adult. But his mental growth is not as natural as a, as a child. So he, he is, he, what, what happens? He, 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 is a, he is a child, but he's doing the things which adults are doing. So that is, to me, again, I'll say this is criminal. In 1999, the surgical manufacturer's industry in Sealcott decided to remove all children from this dangerous work. But immediate withdrawal would mean a disastrous loss of income for families already mired in poverty and a risk that parents would put their children into even more hazardous work. So the International Labour Organization opted for a gradual approach. They helped establish non-formal education centers. For two hours every afternoon, children like Asif go to this special school, taking classes and interacting with children their own age. Like this, they still earn money every day, while catching up on their education. The number of the children has been identified. And the children has been uh, identified. We know where are the uh, places of the uh, areas of consultation. And we can, we can make it, we can definitely make it free of child labor. ILO hopes to reach this target by ensuring that no new children are recruited into the industry and that working children continue with their classes until adulthood. The biggest challenge, however, will still come from families struggling to survive until perhaps more educated sons like Asif help turn their situation around. This report was compiled by Sonia Gurler and Damien Rionor from ILO TV for the CNN World Report.